mine, carry it, mine. Having the best tool for each job is valuable. It makes doing the work faster, easier, more efficient, and generally produces a higher quality workmanship. Many viewers have impressed upon us the importance of proper toolmanship. Sometimes though we don't have the best tool for the job and we make do with what we have. But we're learning there's a significant trade-off between making the best of what you have and spending the time and money it takes to acquire the proper tools. This week, we used what we had. It took a long time and a tremendous amount of physical effort. We pretty much made things worse. We have an extra project on our hands, not to mention it left us both feeling pretty dang sore. We are right smack dab Joe Bob Joe Jr. in the middle of replacing our rotten cockpit floor. We quickly discovered that the previous owner had added plywood to the original cockpit floor without ever getting in and replacing the rotten core. So that layer of fiberglass and the plywood came out fairly easily. Right now we are attempting to remove the original cockpit floor which is balsa wood and has been bonded solidly for almost 50 years now. Now this is a much bigger job. Parts of the core were wet and soggy, other parts of the original core were decomposed and completely gone and other parts are look good as new. So our method has been to use this circular saw. We cut it into grids and then we used this little crowbar and hammered it underneath and wrenched it apart and pulled it out, you know, block by block. See all these little blocks? Some came out in smaller ones. Now this method worked great, especially right here where it was just wet and soggy and um, decomposed it, it just blasted through now here it started we started to get into a problem where it's bonded so well you can see that it's actually taking up the fiberglass with it and that's uh, not great news but all we know now is we're gonna have to sand this and uh, add a layer of fiberglass before adding our new core and we're going to use Nitacore which is here in Luperon, we've confirmed that. We just want to replace the entire cockpit floor with Nitacore. What's really exciting is we have a new tool now because this was not working very well. It was very difficult, hard on the lower back, and it's ripping up more than we want to rip up. So our friend Steven, who lives on a boat on anchor, just lent us his multi-tool, and uh, he gave us fully charged batteries and some blades here. This is a nice sharp blade here, Some different types so we're really excited to see what kind of a difference this will make because yesterday removing all of this with this was a bit brutal and it's, it's, uh, it's causing a little bit more damage than we were hoping so We've been perfecting this core removal process. Oh, they're moving about. Um, so with the circular saw, I just cut uh, about an inch wide grids all the way across, um, just enough to break the fiberglass on the top because this thing has a little bit of trouble. It works really hard to get through the fiberglass. 
but through the bottom layer, it gets through it real easy. So now that I got these uh, grids cut out, I'll just go and slide it in underneath, uh, carve it out, and they pop out fairly easily. So this is a lot, it, it's time consuming, but it's a lot less physical like strain on your lower back. I cannot say enough about this tool right here. From the outside, you can see this looks like pretty good wood, but here, um, hidden, is uh, rotted. You can see this is just coming out. It's just totally wet and soggy, wasn't even in anything in there. So this is why we've decided to just get it all out of here, start from scratch, and go all night at core. I will accept full responsibility for this little mini fiasco. Um, I woke up super motivated, super pumped, wanted to get things done, and all we had was this crowbar at the time and a hammer. Right here you can see, because this crowbar was unable to separate the core from the fiberglass, when I peeled it up, it was ripping up some, in, in some places, all of the fiberglass with the core. So this is definitely going to need to be reinforced. So it's a prime example of get, being gung-ho, not using the proper tool, and making more work for yourself. Now we're going to check out the results of using the proper tool for the job. Mainly it's a lot thicker, we didn't lose very, very much fiberglass. And all we had to do here is sand it down and add core and we would have been good to go. This is an exciting day. We've waited a long time for this. Our epoxy paint came in, PPG Americo. We got two gallons. Whew, it's been about two months. We got it in hand. We can move forward with painting the bottom of the boat. Let's go. Let's go, baby. There used to be a steel boat back in here, now it's just a pile of scrap iron. We heard this huge bang uh, a couple days ago. We were sitting in the boat, the whole boat shook like there was an earthquake. <laughs> and we looked up and they had just sawed off the bow, like the whole whatever triangular portion of the bow had just been <laughs> cut off. Yeah, this right here and just boom, hit the ground with a shudder. And they've been cutting it apart ever since. Gonna scrap it out, I guess. The end of the life. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, they just got it leaning up against that boat there. Should be fine, I guess. That one's probably next. So this is Michael's first time trying to ride a bike. There's Isaac there, giving her some pointers. Isaac just showed us a video of him doing a wheelie going 180 miles an hour on his bike. So this guy's crazy. I've never ridden a motorcycle before today. Well, okay, I've never driven a motorcycle. I rode on the back all the time with Joel, and I figured I'd give it a try, because I give him crap all the time about how bad he drives this bike, but he always tells me that you'll never understand until you drive this bike yourself. It's a piece of And um, I'm finding that that's kind of true. It's a tough bike to ride. It's, it's going okay in the boatyard, so we decided to take it out onto the road. I'm only gonna go in first maybe second gear down the stretch and see what happens. That's the other way to turn it off, right? 
These are the tales of Boab.